One question I get a lot in my comments and Discord server is tips and tricks for starting Terraria. And also, one's asking for better tips for later in the game, which is exactly what this video's for. In this video, I'll quickly go over 50 Terraria life hacks that will help you out in any stage of the game. So, let's get into it. For the first few life hacks in this video, let's take a look at ones that will help you out with your worlds. Firstly, if you want to slow the spread of your evil biomes, all you need to do is beat Plantera, which will slow it by 50%. Besides slowing the spread by 50%, you can also stop it spreading on the surface by planting two sunflowers on the ground, and can also fully stop it spreading to one part of the world by adding a four block wide hole going to the underworld. While the evil biomes are usually something you don't want, if you do want them for farming or boss purposes, you sadly only get one per world. But if you use the secret seed I have on screen now, it will generate both the corruption and crimson. Speaking of things that you only get one of in each world, you can use the Chlorophyte Extractinator to turn ores into their opposite counterparts, which saves you a trip to another world. Something you might have trouble with finding is your floating islands, but you can just golf into the air to move the camera into the sky, which will let you see if there's anything up there. Another tip for finding floating islands is to look for small puddles on the ground, as they are sometimes directly under floating islands. While you're looking for islands, something to remember is that your dungeon and ice biome will always spawn on the same side of the world, which will also be the opposite side of where the jungle spawns. Another biome you might want to find quickly is your aether biome, which will always spawn under the beach that's on the side of your world that also has the jungle. Speaking of the aether, you can also use the shimmer to get free reforges on your weapons that are craftable by throwing them into it and then using the items that pop out to recraft the original item. Something that's a problem with liquids like shimmer, water, and lava is trying to move them, but if you make a 4x4 block under the pool of liquid, place a chest in it with at least one item in it. And finally, put whatever will turn the above liquid into another block into that hole as well. Once you break the barrier for that hole and restart your world, the original pool of liquid will be completely gone. Speaking of water, if you just started Terraria and are looking for the easiest pet to get, you can do that by checking the water chests in the oceans, and if you don't see the shark pet in one, just make a new world and check those ocean chests, and repeat that process until you eventually find the shark pet. Another pet tip is one that helps you get the rarest pet in the game, which is the dirt block pet, which will actually have a 5 times higher spawn rate on Celebration Secret Seed worlds. Something you probably already have in your world is a platform-based arena, but there's actually a better option. Instead of you using platforms, use planter boxes, since they work just like platforms, and will grow herbs you can use in potions. Speaking of flowers, you can also use the flower boots to easily grow flowers by just walking over grass. While the last tip is already pretty helpful, you can increase how many herbs you get by using the staff of regrowth on them, making the platforms extra useful. Another great platform-related tip is to go into your controls and set a button for quick healing, which will allow you to use the healing potions in your inventory without having to click and use them manually. One issue you may have is finding the fake dungeon walls, but if you use a sense of danger potion, the fake walls will turn a different color. Something you'll always need in your world is wood, and to avoid having to constantly replant them, you can just use the axe of regrowth, which will auto-replant trees the second you destroy them using it. Moving on to some more fun ones now, there was a collector's edition of Terraria that was the only way to get the bunny pet. But they stopped selling it as of now. However, you can use registry edit to get the pet in your game regardless of your version. If you wear the sunglasses item, the sun will also put on sunglasses. Next, a very easy way to stop enemies from breaking down your doors is by placing something on one side of the door, like a lamp, which is my go-to. Speaking of houses, beds in Terraria will actually speed up time and set your spawn. Besides beds, you can sit in chairs and also stand by campfires to increase your health regeneration, so they're usually in boss arenas. Another helpful house tip has to do with ones in the jungle, which will actually decrease enemy spawns around it, which is extremely helpful in the early game. This next tip will most likely be patched in a future update, but I decided to go ahead and include it since we're about to go over the NPC tips, which is an easy money glitch. All you have to do is make this setup I have on screen now, place crystal shards in the open block, and then the crystals will start duplicating, which you can sell. If you don't want to use glitches though, you can always just go break desert pots, which will drop a lot more money. If the pots are working good enough for you money-wise, you can always turn one of your oceans into a jungle and use a lucky coin and slime staff to easily farm money, which I cover more in my best farms video. Now that you have a ton of money, you need an easy way to hold it, which you can do by putting a safe inside of a piggy bank. 
which will let you have an extra 79 slots to store items on your player. After you fill up those 79 slots though, your best option to store your stuff might just be barrels, since they have a cheaper crafting recipe. Moving on to the NPC ones now, the easiest way to get a pylon is by throwing the nurse and arms dealer in a house together in the jungle. Besides those two NPCs though, you can also look at the biomes in the backgrounds of the NPCs to figure out their preferred biome. A great way to get some good loot right when you start playing is by using the Celebration Seed, which will have the princess at spawn who sells the slime staff, among other things. The next tip will have us moving underground, so now is the perfect time to explain the fastest way to drop down in Terraria, which is by using the Queen Slime Mount, which has the fastest falling speed out of all of the mounts. Moving underground now, whenever you're looking for bound NPCs, an easy way to find them is by looking for bunnies that you know aren't supposed to be underground, which will spawn near those bound NPCs. While you're underground in Terraria, something annoying you'll have to deal with is traps. But if you hold any wire-related item, like a pressure plate you stole from a trap, you will be able to see the wiring of traps in caves, letting you avoid some decent damage. Speaking of wires, you can craft the grand design item to cut wires from any range, which will greatly help out with those traps. Something new players might not think to do is to put the Dryad in your boss arena, but doing that will actually give you a small boost to your defense alongside her attacking the bosses. Another thing you can use the Dryad for is getting the opposite evil biome in your world without cheating or using a secret seed, which you can do by putting her in a graveyard biome and buying the seeds from her. And for the final NPC tip I have, we have an easy way to complete the fishing quest achievements. To do this, you first need to get in journey mode and get a house made for the angler, and then use the time travel feature until he has a quest for a fish you can catch in your area. Once you have a workable quest, catch two of those fish, start duplicating them, and finally fill up multiple chests of them. After that, it's just making new journey mode characters, getting back into the world you were in, and turning in those fish you just made to the angler. Finally, we are on the boss tips, with the first one helping with one of the hardest bosses in the game, Duke Fishron. Most of the time, you'll need to build a platform over the ocean, since you'll be falling to the ground a lot during the Duke Fishron battle. But if you build that platform with asphalt instead of normal blocks like wood, you will actually get a speed boost when running on it, which is extremely helpful in the Duke Fishron fight. Speaking of Duke Fishron, another hard part of that boss is trying to catch the Truffle Worm to summon it. But if you use an invisible potion before running up on it, you will have a little bit longer to catch it before it runs off. Another boss that can be hard is Queen Bee, since you normally have to fight it in a small beehive. But if you drop a bomb near the Queen Bee spawn and then teleport home using potions or a mirror, once the bomb goes off, Queen Bee will rush to you, allowing you to fight it in the overworld. The Queen Bee boss actually has two more tips for us in this video, with the first one being you can easily fish up honeyfish in beehives, since there's only two fish there, which will heal you by 120 points. And the second Queen Bee tip has to do with its bee grenades that it drops, which you can use to easily cheese Skeletron and the Wall of Flesh. Another tip for the Wall of Flesh is to use anti-gravity potions while fighting it, instead of wasting time and making a long platform. Something every world should have is an invasion farm, which is just a simple design like I have on screen now, but will come in handy when random events like blood moons happen. One part of the game you're normally locked out of until a certain point is the jungle temple, but if you make the setup I have on screen now and walk into it while holding down, you will be able to get through the jungle temple's door. And finally, for the 50th tip, whenever you see a ladybug, you should just touch it instead of doing anything to it, since touching it will boost your luck stat, and killing it will hurt your luck stat. That wraps up 50 tips and tricks every Terraria player should know and use. While those are just my top 50, be sure to let me know in the comments what your favorite ones are. Thanks for sticking to the end. If you made it this far, be sure to comment Shark Pup to let me know. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Terraria videos like this in the future. And as always, make sure to have a wonderful day.